Hey again, this is Jennifer with Northwest Stamper, and I have another Walkthrough Wednesday for you today. Uh, today we're going to be using a new stamp set called Sprinkles of Life that's out in the new Stampin' Up! annual catalog. Uh, this is also the Ronald McDonald stamp set where for every stamp set that's sold, Stampin' Up! donates $3 to the Ronald McDonald house. So kind of a fun charity Walkthrough Wednesday here for you. Um, I was working on a card, and I was actually working on a bunch of cards, which I've now turned into a Sprinkles of Lies class by mail. Um, so if you're interested, if you like these cards and are interested in doing these at home, um, I have that coming up. Um, it'll be up on my blog today so that you can, if you're interested, sign up and make these projects at home. But today specifically we're going to be looking at this card because it is a fun, quick card to do and it uses some of the new punches and stamps that I love. That's what helps make it go super quickly. So shall we get started? Let's do it. So um, the thing with this is it's just going to be your basic uh, four and a quarter by eight and a half, or excuse me, 11 by four and a quarter card base. It's just scored in half. That's going to be your Whisper White card base. Um, and then I'm just using some of the new watermelon uh, Wonder paper that's one of the new ink colors and then we're using a couple patterns that's out of this new cherry on top uh, designer paper pack. Now this is the new size that they have. They still have 12 by 12 but now their little paper stacks are coming in 6 by 6 uh, and this is a really cute paper pack. Um, those cards that I showed you a second ago um, they used a number of these papers so that's um, the class by mail is this and the stamp set and punch set. Um, the other thing that we'll be using is, like I said, the Sprinkles of Life stamp set. And so what you will need to complete the card, besides the paper, is you'll need three ink colors. You need Bermuda Bay, Watermelon Wonder, and Crushed Curry. You're going to need a two and a half inch circle punch. Oops, bang, that's a little loud. They're heavy when they drop. The Tree Builder Punch. Now this is the punch that's made to match the Sprinkles of Life stamp set and it cuts out pretty much every shape that's on here, which is awesome. So it, we're only using the cupcake part today, but it does um, the tree base, the tree's trunk it is apples, birds, raindrops, and then we'll be using the flower and this icing top slash tree top slash cloud. And then finally, we'll be using this punch. I think it's technically called the banner triple punch, but I always call it the triple banner punch. Um, and you'll see why in a minute why it's called that. So, we need the stamp set, we need some paper, some punches, some inks, and let's go. Okay, so the very first thing that I'll show you here is we'll go ahead and talk about this banner punch because that's the first thing I'm going to do. This thing is super cool if you've used any of the tag topper punches. It's the same concept. It's the idea of taking a piece of paper and sliding it in to get your end. In the catalog, it's super weird because it just shows you this triangle and you're like, I don't get it. Why would I want a punch that does this triangle, especially for that price? But the thing is, is it has three little levels. So it perfectly cuts a one inch strip. So it just slides into the bottom notch. Slide it all the way to the very back so it hits. It won't go in any further. Press and you have a perfect banner tip. You can use your scissors or you can just use the punch. Next, you can go up to the next level. It's one and a half inch. Push it in, punch, and you have perfect banner tips there. And then you'll take this two inch wide strip, it fits on the top, same thing that we just did, all the way in and all the way to the back. Just slide it all the way until it won't go any further. If you need to, you can flip it over and check. Punch, and you're done. So now we can set that punch aside. And that's where we have our three layers. Oh, I forgot you're also going to need ribbon um, and rhinestones for this card, but we'll get to that. So I had these here. I wanted to just make this stand out a little bit more, so I decided I wanted to sponge the edge. And instead of doing my usual um, browns, I always tend to go for crumb cake or soft suede. I decided to go with this crushed curry. That's the same color that's in here. Um, and that way it just kind of gave it a slightly brighter look without kind of darkening the whole thing. Because the whole point of this card is for it to be bright and cheery because goodness knows, when it comes, when it's rainy sometimes, a little bit of sunshine is nice. So I'm just going to do this to all of my pieces. 
And I'm not doing it along the top just because that's going to line up along the edge of the card and well I just didn't feel like it. So I'm just doing the banner tip which is nice and wide and then the long edges. Now when I'm sponging edges I really do prefer my sponge dauber. I feel like it gives me the most control over yellow sponges and even makeup sponges. Plus the fact that I can stick it on my fingertip means that I don't get dirty. <laughs> And goodness knows I get ink on me all over. So this is any little places where I can try to keep from getting extra ink is useful. And then I can control if I go straight up and down, it barely inks it. If I go more to the side, it's going to really um, get in and ink it. So I like that I have that control. And the sponge dauber lays it on fairly dense. And so it gives it a really nice look. And... I don't know, every time I try to use the yellow sponges, I invariably get a big part that sticks way in. And the other thing I talk to people that they tend to do is they'll take their ink pad and they'll scrape this along the edge, which gives you a really dark, really tiny line. And I, that's just not my style. I prefer it to be in a little bit more here, like you can see on this one here. Whereas if I took, here, let's see if I can show you grab this. Oh, it doesn't want to pick up from the table. So if I just took this and scraped it along the edge, you can see there's yellow there, but it's really hard to see. And I'd, if I try to do this, then it gets too much and it's just, I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's just not as pretty. So I like the control you get with this. Um, and also if you're the sort of person that does this, be very careful if you have one of the firm foam pads. Um, these pads I'll show you here with this watermelon wonder. If you have one of these shiny pads and you do that, you run the risk of cutting the foam. And once you've cut the foam, there's no way to fix that. And that will give you a line when you ink up your stamp sometimes. So you do want to be careful about that. Okay, so we have these guys and all we're going to do is just glue them down onto our paper. So you'll just grab your um, favorite adhesive, um, the snail two-way glue pen, and I just layered them so that they overlapped a little and so that they laid down on my card like that. So I'll glue those down in a second, but you can see how that's coming together. Next, we're gonna start building into our cupcake. So I started with a piece of white scrap paper to be our base and this two and a half inch circle punch. And I just punch it out of any scrap, doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna take my crushed curry and just sponge on the edge. And you usually with the sponge daubers, they retain enough ink that you don't have to re-stamp, re-ink it immediately. You see I got good color without actually going back to the ink pad. This is also why I have one uh, sponge dauber per color. So I label them. This is my crushed curry sponge dauber. Um, you can clean them. You can actually take them to a stamp and scrub pad, scrub it um, just like you're cleaning a stamp. They get really stained up and dirty, but they work fine. So you do have that choice. I just like them looking neat and clean. Okay, so now we've got that. So now let's make our cupcake. This is where we're going to get into this uh, stamp set here. We're going to use this little basket base. It's either, you can either think of it as a cupcake or you can think of it as a basket. Um, I can see here, um, well, I guess I had a different one that I used for the flowers to make it a little basket, but you can use that and then we're going to use this cloud with the sprinkles to go on top. So I have here a Bermuda Bay piece of scrap paper and a watermelon wonder piece of scrap paper. So I'm going to use the same watermelon wonder ink, ink up my little fluffy little cloud and we will just stamp it on here and then I'm going to take my sprinkles, ink it up twice and stamp one and I'm just being a little it doesn't really matter how they lay out just put a little bit on to be little toppers and then you can take your tree builder punch here and slide it in and you will have a perfect way to cut out the cupcake top then just grab your Bermuda Bay ink grab your cupcake base Ink that puppy up. We're going to stamp that onto a scrap of Bermuda Bay and we're going to just cut that out by hand. There's not actually 
That's the one thing that's not on this punch. Pretty much everything else except for the bases are on here. So we're going to cut that out by hand actually before I put that away. But we're also going to punch out, you can just take this corner and we're going to just punch out a little flower that's in there. So that's just going to be a little accent piece for our cupcake top. Okay, now once you've finished cutting out your cupcake base, now we can start layering everything together onto your circle because that's just going to go right on top of your card. So just add a little bit of adhesive, stick your cupcake base in here, take your cupcake top, add a little bit of adhesive, stick it down on top. And then for your flower, I just find it's easier to take this two-way glue pen um, and I can pick it up add a little bit on the back and then I can just stick him down on my cupcake and then I get my rhinestones because I want to add a little bit of bling and then I keep my rhinestones as you can see in a clear mount case it keeps them from falling all over the place or getting stuck to everything but you want to use the smallest so there's I'm missing my biggest ones there's big, big medium and small don't use these these are one long strip of glue so if you try to pop these off it's not going to work at all for you um, instead go for one of the little ones that are up here and I like to use my paper piercing tool because it can slide underneath really easily um, and it picks it up on the tip so if you try to use your fingertips you may have experienced the flipping off of rhinestones you may have lost them onto you or the floor. This is an easy way to pick it up and set it down. Just, you see how it just goes up and down there and put your finger on top and you're done. So we're going to take this guy and then I have glued these down here and we're just going to put a few uh, little dimensionals on the back. And actually, before I put this down, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ribbon on because that'll help me layer things out. Um, this is the new uh, Watermelon Wonder, the in-color dotted lace ribbon. It's gorgeous and it's so nice to work with. Um, but I just have, this is about 14 inches. It's more than I need, but it just makes it easy to tie. So I wrap it all the way around the inside. This is why I had it cut that long way. And I'm just going to do a little square knot. So if you ever have problems tying knots or bows, this is what I always think of. I go right over left, under and through. And I, when I pull it, I pull it up and down. So the opposite direction of my ribbon. This helps it get nice and tight. And you can see it makes those little triangles. And then I'll hold it with my finger. So I did right over left, under and through. And you take your left one. This is in my left hand. Left, over right, under and through. So I've just tucked it over. And I'm keeping my finger holding down on the knot as long as I can um, so that it stays nice and tight. And because you tied it all the way around to the inside, you can just slide it around. So I'm just going to slide it up a little bit so it's nearer to the top. Maybe adjust it by nudging it over a little bit. And then I can take this little cupcake guy and stick him here. And obviously this is too long, so I need to take my scissors and trim these a little bit. So we just cut some of that off there. And then all we have to do is add our sentiment at the bottom. And I guess that's the one that I didn't pull out already. So they have great sentiments in here. I love the, uh, you are the sprinkles on the cupcake of life, which is what we are going to use today. But you can also do things that say just plain happy birthday or the fun money can't buy happiness, but it can buy cupcakes. And that's kind of the same thing. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop this guy on here. I'm going to use our crushed curry and add him to the bottom down here. And make sure you stamp it with the words pointed the right way. <laughs> That would have been sad if it was upside down. And with that, you are done. We have our quick and easy card that is really cute with lots of little accents that all coordinate together. It's a great way of using your older colors that you have, this Crush Curry and Bermuda Bay that have been around for a while, mixing in your new colors, this Watermelon Wonder and the other in colors. So I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a try. And like I said, if you love the stamp set and punch as much as I do and are interested in making more cards, I have this class that will be out available. You can sign up now and it will be available to ship out next week. Um, 
and you'll get extra paper. You'll get your own pack of that cherry on top paper. Um, you'll get all the supplies, everything pre-cut, so you can make this at home uh, and have not have to worry about trimming it yourself. So thank you for joining me. I look forward to bringing you more cards and projects in the future. So enjoy and happy stamping.